Hey guys, welcome to You Don't Know Ball Mock Draft Madness. Day 28 of doing a mock draft every single day until the NFL draft on April 25th. If you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe, leave a like. Let me know in the comments your favorite and least favorite pick from this mock draft, as well as trade scenarios. Yesterday, we had the Chiefs trading up to get a cornerback one. Today, we are going to do something a little bit interesting with the Rams, as well as our typical kind of trade up with the Vikings, or maybe a team like the Broncos, or... I have another idea that I'm probably going to try to um, throw in there um, just because I haven't done it in quite a while or really, I don't know if I've ever done it during this mock draft madness and it's a team that's not really talked about trading up for a quarterback, but um, they're kind of in you know the quarterback range. So let's start this off. We're going to go Caleb Williams to the Chicago Bears. Then we are going to go Drake May to the New England or the Washington Commanders. So with Jane Daniels on the clock, I think Jane Daniels is a very, very coveted player by a certain number of teams. Like certain teams that are really like him. For example, I think the the Giants really like him. Another team I think that really likes him is the Raiders. So I don't think it is out of body to think the Raiders may trade up here. Obviously, I have not done the Raiders in a trade-up in quite a while, but I think the reality is um, it's possible. So I am going to do a 13 and a second this year. Uh, I'm going to do a first next year, and then I can't do it, but I'm going to do a 2026 uh, first as well. Obviously, the compensation isn't uh, 100%, but the reality is I can't do 2026, so, you know, just know there's more here. So we're going to offer that trade, it's going to be accepted, and then the Raiders are on the clock, and they are going to be taking Jaden Daniels. So now we have the New England Patriots, the New England Cardinals, the Arizona Cardinals taking Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't think it's really a question. Chargers are on the clock. Now, who is going to be trading up for J.J. McCarthy? Is it the Minnesota Vikings or is it the Denver Broncos? Well, seeing as Patrick Mahomes is in your division, Justin Herbert is in your division, and now you have Jaden Daniels in your division, I feel like the Broncos really cannot afford to miss out on their rookie QB. So we're going to give them... 12 and 76, first round next year, second round next year, and we are going to trade up with the Los Angeles Chargers. Wait. Why am I tweaking? Yeah, no, that's not going to happen, guys. In division, what the fuck? Why am I tweaking? Yeah, so, trying to think of another team, because, I, I mean, I think the Vikings are probably the most likely candidate to trade up here. Um... And I think the reality is it's probably, yeah, it's going to be the Vikings. Let's let's not play around too much. We already got the Raiders straightened up. So I'm going to give them 11, 23, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to swap that. All right. So let me ask this question, okay? Because in the comments, I get a lot from Vikings fans that they won't do three firsts, okay? You don't have a second this year, and you don't have a second next year. You also don't have a third this year. So what is it going to be? A pick swap, one first and a third? Like, realistically, I don't think that gets it done. So, like, we can sit here and argue over compensation, but the reality is you don't have any seconds to give. If you had, if you could give a pick swap, a first, and then two seconds, yeah, I'd be down. But the reality is you don't have that draft capital. Like, it's probably going to be the three firsts. Like, realistically, I mean, if there's nothing else on top of that, which I, I could see how it wouldn't be, but you don't have, like, the compensation to really argue outside of that first unless you're going to give away a player. And I don't see them giving away any other players. So I don't really know how else we'd make this deal work. Um, like I said, leave trade compensation in the description or description comments so I can kind of get what you're seeing because – I mean, I don't, I don't think a pick swap and a first and a third is going to get it done. A third next year, by the way. So we're going to force that trade through. 
Minnesota Vikings are on the clock. They are going to take J.J. McCarthy. Number six, I am going to give Rome Odunze to the New York Giants. I believe they're probably going to go um, wide receiver. And then with the Tennessee Titans, I've been going a little bit more of the receiving route. So I've usually had Malik Neighbors go six, but now we're going to have Malik Neighbors paired with Calvin Ridley, D-Hop, and Traylon Burks, giving Will Levis every weapon he can to work with. So the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock, and we did a trade back with them yesterday. The reality is Dallas Turner may be there later in the draft. Sorry, guys, I got a piece of gum in my mouth. Um... Bad idea for a YouTube video. But I think there's a team that could possibly want to come up and get a guy like Joe Alt. Um, because the reality is you can get one of those edges. And the Falcons could use some more draft capital. Not that they like desperately need it, but they can get an edge player later in the draft. And I don't, yes, you're going to be getting a very good player, but I don't know if that's necessarily like what you need right now. Um, every team could use good players. I'm not trying to say that, but it's like the value of what you could get in draft capital compared to what you're going to get at the eighth overall pick may be better on the capital side. So a team that really does need help Unfortunately, they're in the division. I was going to say the Saints. That's not going to work. Um, so, let's see who could use a left tackle here. Because Joe Alt is really that guy. Um, yeah, no. So, I don't know. It looks like they're going to be sticking and picking unless there's a team that wants to come up for somebody else here. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what we do here. I don't. That's the thing, too, is like... I know I just went on a rant about them getting value for trading back, but <laughs> you have to have a partner, and that is kind of the spot I'm stuck in right here. Um, So, I'm going to go... I think I'm just going to go Dallas Turner. It's so boring, though. We do Dallas Turner all the time. We do Dallas Turner all the time. Um, so hold on guys, bear with me here. Let me see if I can figure this out. We just saw the Patriots trade back. Hold on. I kind of, hold on. I kind of like this. Let me cook. We're going to give him, we're going to give them eight and we're going to give them 68. To move up five spots, we're going to force this trade through. New England Patriots are on the clock, and they are going to take Joe Alt. They're able to get a haul, move up, and still get their guy. I actually like that pick a lot. You have a foundational piece on that offensive line now. And number nine, Chicago Bears are on the clock. I think they're probably going to stick and pick. This is honestly the worst situation for them. Joe Alt is off the board. The top three receivers are off the board. I don't know if they're going to target Brock Bowers. I don't necessarily know where they are going to go here. Um, but actually, you know what? I'm going to stick and pick, and I'm going to take Dallas Turner to play on opposite side of Montez Sweat. I think Edge is still an option for them. I do believe they're going to do as much as they can to build around Caleb Williams. But in this situation... Probably worst case scenario for the Bears. This is probably what they do. At number 10, we have the New York Jets. Um, they just got uh, Hassan Reddick today for a conditional third. So I'm going to give them another weapon on offense in Brock Bowers. At number 11, we have the Los Angeles Chargers on the clock. Um, without the, you know, the top receivers being here, I think Talise Fuwanga is a very simple pick. Anything O-line, guys. With their first pick, I truly do believe they're going to go O-line. At number 12, we have the Denver Broncos. I hate picking for them. I actually honestly like dread them every day because it's like they just... 
oh it's so infuriating picking for them just because it's like what do you do with them like the 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 no the kind of no nonsense pick well it's kind of nonsense taking them this high is Bo Nix or Michael Penix and you're in a division it's kind of it's a cop-out pick guys it's really a cop-out pick but I'm gonna go Bo Nix to the Denver Broncos and number 13 we have the Atlanta Falcons they were able to move back now they have um oh yeah they have two thirds and they have a second I think easily they can go Jared verse here and supplement their defensive line at number 14 we have the New Orleans Saints I've had them men- I've had them going O line. They do need a lot of O line help. I'm going to go Troy Fautanu, someone who can play kind of all the positions on the line. He can play tackle. He can play guard for you. Kind of up in the air right now with you know Ruiz, Ramchek, Penning. You don't really know what's going on. So this is a very easy pick for them because they can play him at any spot. 15. We have the Indianapolis Colts. So. I think it is kind of a reality that they're going to go corner. I could see them adding a wide receiver if one of the top three guys falls to them or even Bowers, um, which I think is a little bit more of a realistic thing is Bowers is going to fall a little bit. Um, even though he's a great player, I just think, you know, with the positions, um, the reality is he could fall uh, being a tight end. And, you know, with these guys on the board, I mean, Terry and Arnold or Cooper – or Quinion Mitchell are just such simple picks because it's like they're CB1 in the draft. They need help in the cornerback room, and you're getting a very, very, in my opinion, high floor guy in Terran Arnold or Quinion Mitchell. Um, and, you know, it could be either or depending on what you want. 16, we have the Seattle Seahawks. Did see a report today that um, teams kind of are hoping that, or teams are kind of looking at Jackson Powers Johnson more as a mid 20s pick mid 20s uh late first pick um so I don't know if I'm gonna have him going here to the Seattle Seahawks I do think adding a guy um like a Byron Murphy to the middle to you know rush alongside like a Leonard Williams could be um good for them it's upsetting that the reality is This is kind of a weird spot in the draft where it's like you can get one of the better corners, but do you need the corner? Um, They've invested in edge before. The interior of the O-line is really the need that they have. And if you look at their draft capital, they they don't have a second round pick, so they can't fix the interior of the O-line then. They didn't do a ton in free agency. So it leaves them in an awkward position where it's kind of like you have to overdraft unless you can find someone to trade back. Because I don't think Latu is a bad pick. And I think it definitely supplements the defensive line. And if we want to look at best player available, it's probably it's probably these guys. The issue is they don't need tackle. They've invested quite a bit in draft capital in their defensive line. But... I feel like if you add a pass rusher like Leatu Latu, you are adding like another caliber of pass rusher to your defensive line. And when your defensive line is better, it obviously improves your secondary. So Leatu Latu to the Seattle Seahawks, 17 to the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can do a lot here. With the top edges off the board, it's kind of tough for them. I just feel like Jerzon Newton would also be a good, you know, Jaguar. I think pairing like a Quinion Mitchell with Tyson Campbell, though, would be a little bit more deadly. I like that pick a little bit more. They got Sheldon Rankins. They lost DJ Reader. I think even then, getting a guy like Jerzon Newton can be an instant impact for the Bengals team who is looking to compete right now. I also could see them taking a wide receiver like a Brian Thomas Jr. to pair with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Tyler Boyd's out of there. Higgins is probably gone after this year. Los Angeles Rams, unfortunately, they lost out on the top three edge market. But that is okay because I have a plan for the Los Angeles Rams here. So... The reality is they need defensive line help, 
and Byron Murphy's nice. But the whole point of one of the suggestions in the comments was to have them trade back and pick up a guy in the edge at the end of the first. So if we're looking at the board right here, I'm trying to find a team that would be willing to kind of move up for one of their guys. Um, and I think Olu Fashanu could also be a good pick for them. And I'm trying to think of a team that like desperately needs like a left tackle. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I have an idea. And I know they don't. <laughs> Where the fuck are they? I know they don't do this often. Ah, <sighs> can you play Ronnie Staley at right? Because I was gonna say, if you're able to, but you're you do run the ball a decent amount. I don't know if the Ravens want to do that. Hold on, I am going to have them making another trade up. I'm gonna have the Chiefs trade up here. I think. Based on one thing, because Juwan Taylor's under contract. Yeah, okay. So, with how much the Chiefs run the ball, if they're able to move up, I, I mean, honestly, this may be, this is probably not fair trade compensation, let's be real. Chiefs are on the clock, and they're going to take Olu Fashanu. With how much they pass the ball, taking a guy with such a high floor in terms of pass protection, yes, he could be better in the run game, but we know how the Chiefs play football. They are a passing team. Uh, they do run the ball a decent amount. It's just more like when you know that the Chiefs need to win the game, the ball is always, always, always in Patrick Mahomes' hand. Pittsburgh Steelers on the clock here. I think pairing... Um, J.C. Latham with Broderick Jones could be nice. Um, I also think Amarius Mims is a good addition. But let's go have Jackson Powers Johnson, someone who can play on the interior for them. Miami Dolphins on the board. Byron Murphy is going to do his best to replace Christian Wilkins. Cooper DeGene could be a very simple pick for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, they could go Tyler Guyton. I do like the idea of a Brian Thomas Jr. This is a tough pick for them because... I do think Mims is good as well, um, and it just kind of is like, they're both like project guys, Guyton is a little bit bigger, I believe, maybe an inch bigger, I just like how Mims moves, and I think he's just the slightest bit more polished than Guyton, so I think that's an easy pick for them to kind of develop behind Lane Johnson. 23, we have the Los Angeles Chargers who took Talisa Fuaga. Brian Thomas Jr. is on the board, and they could easily also go Graham Barton, someone who's going to play on that interior of the offensive line. Um, now, do I think they go back-to-back -back O line picks? No, I don't. But I'm going to be a little bit crazy because if you look at the Los Angeles Chargers, they have picked 37, and one of the wide receivers is going to be there. So if you want to run the ball and be a good offensive line, you need the weapons. And Graham Barton, can, Graham Barton and Talisa Fuanga can pair with Rashawn Slater and Corey Lindsley at um, center. Zion Johnson is your guard. Like, guys, you have like a... You just rebuilt your line. Like, that's a great line to have uh, for Justin Herbert. At number 24, we have the Dallas Cowboys on the clock. Uh, I think J.C. Latham could be a nice pick here. Um, I know you have Tyler Smith at, um, you know, left tackle. Terrence Steele is there. He is not bad. Um, Zach Martin is getting a little bit older. Maybe you need a kind of like more of a guard. Um, I don't know. The... The I think Zach Frazier could be an interesting pick for them as well. They have a lot of needs, but also not. They between the Cowboys and the Broncos, those are teams that I just don't like picking for. Cause it's just like I mean, like realistically, like what do you do with them? Their wide receiver room isn't horrible. 
Um, I doubt they go wide receiver round one. I think kind of their interior, their O-line needs a little bit more attention. I don't like the edges that are available. I don't like the defensive interiors that are available. They have Deron Bland. They have Trayvon Diggs. Oh, wait. Is Stephon Gilmore a free agent? Why have I been thinking he has not been a free agent this whole time? Maybe adding a guy like a Nate Wiggins to that wide receiver room could be nice. Let him develop behind those two guys. At number 25, we have the Green Bay Packers. Cooper DeGene is easy for them. He can play safety. Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the clock. They have their tackles. They're kind of more looking for the interior. Zach Frazier could be that guy. Um, I think they do need cornerback help. So I think Kuwe McKinstry could be a simple good pick for them. 27 to the Arizona Cardinals. So... I have kind of strayed away from going tackle because they have Jonah Williams, but I believe the Jonah Williams contract is only one year, and I don't think that should necessarily shy away from them taking J.C. Latham. I also think they could add a corner like T.J. Tampa. I think that would be a good pick. So that's what I'm going to do because it gives them more of an instant impact, but J.C. Latham to pair with Paris Johnson Jr. for the future is definitely not a bad move. 28 to the Buffalo Bills. Um, you know, they could use wide receiver. I've gone wide receiver for them a couple times. I think they do kind of need some help in that DB room as well. Um, it's not the deepest, um, especially, you know, Kyer at Elam hasn't really panned out as much as you want them to. Um, their D-line room is okay. I just don't love the D-line here. Um, you know, you could look, and and I do like Ed Oliver and Daquan Jones, but a guy maybe, I feel like I'm reaching, I'm reaching a little bit on him, guys, but if we look at the defensive interior, Braden Fisk could be nice. Am I, I think I'm going to do something a little crazy. And I don't think he's going to go here. So please don't leave a comment saying, he's not going to go first round. But what about the idea of Tavondre Sweat going to the Buffalo Bills? You add a guy that you know is going to be dominant on the inside. He's got big size. He doesn't have to be... Obviously, you're going to worry about the conditioning, but... You have Jones and you have Ed Oliver. You don't have to play him every snap. Like, rotate him in. You know he's going to stuff the run. Like, he could be up. And I don't think he's going to be available for them with their next pick. So, you're reaching, yes. But, let's have fun. It's Mock Draft Madness. 29, we have the Detroit Lions on the clock. Corner is definitely a need for them, <laughs> kind of badly. Um, they need interior as well. You know, I've heard this from a couple teams a while ago that they are looking at J.C. Latham as kind of a guard. So maybe you take J.C. Latham, let him, he can play tackle if you need him to, but then... You know, Zeitler's only there for one year. You have a very high-quality guard then ready to go as soon as Zeitler's off that contract. Baltimore Ravens on the clock. I've had them going tackle. I think with Brian Thomas Jr. on the board here, that is an easy selection to pair him with Zay Flowers. Number 2031, San Francisco 49ers. Guyton, to me, is kind of the easy pick here because... He can develop behind Trent Williams and Colton McKivitz. Very boring. I think for the 49ers, it's going to be tackle, a wide receiver, or cornerback. Now with the Los Angeles Rams on the clock, I can finish cooking Chop Robinson. Um, high motor guy to put on the end of the line uh, opposite of Kobe Turner. And you've cooked a little bit, added draft capital. Uh, maybe not accurate draft capital, but draft capital. This has been Mock Draft Madness, day 28. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't know ball, want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Let me know in the comments your favorite and least favorite pick from this mock draft as well as trade scenarios. I'll be back tomorrow with another mock draft. We are getting so, so close. Hope you guys have a great, good Friday. Got the holiday coming up. I still will have an Easter edition of Mock Draft Madness. Maybe I got to think of something to do, like interesting, like Easter related. Um, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you.